Christ has risen. Alleluia. Oh, it is with great Easter joy that I greet you this morning. And we celebrate that Jesus is alive. Maybe some of you remember. Now, kiddos, you can let your parents in on this one, that we talked about joy just a few months ago. We unboxed joy and we discovered that joy meant finding ways to be happy even when things do not go your way. Huh. Well, who would have thought we would be in this situation now when nothing seems to be going our way? Why, there are no play dates, there are no soccer games, there are no recitals, there was no Grace Place Easter egg hunt. And I have to tell you, I do miss Pastor Ben with his arms all willy-nilly, waving about, leading us in the Alleluia song, Praise be the Lord. Oh, you know, sometimes it can feel a bit overwhelming. It can bring a tear to the eye. But we today can find joy because Jesus has risen. Jesus is alive. Jesus is stronger and greater than death. Christ is risen. Alleluia. We can find joy because we can celebrate Easter together today, right here in our own homes. And in fact, there is delicious joy in the fact that we can celebrate Easter right in our jammies. Mm -hmm. There's lots of Easter joy about why we have our Easter baskets and oh yes, those are joyful. We can decorate Easter eggs, that's certainly joyful. We can find joy playing Easter Bunny Bingo. You know, what I think of Easter and what brings me joy are the flowers. Now I have to ask you, have you ever thought about why we use these white flowers to celebrate Easter? Ah, I'm delighted you asked. We interrupt this message to bring you another message from God's grace. God's grace, all free, all clean, all the time. God's grace. Jesus healed hearts, and minds, and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God, love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him. He was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, he told them that he would be leaving, but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him. The religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him. But a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, it is finished. Then he died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. 
even the soldiers cried, Surely he was the Son of God. One of Jesus' followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised, the one who would rescue them, but now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus' friends stayed hidden in fear for three days. But early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, God's Son, became like us to lay down his life. Through God's power, he defeated death for all of us, and sin was washed away. One day, he's promised to return so we can live with him forever. And now back to your regularly scheduled Easter message, brought to you by God's grace. Well, you know, lilies are considered symbols of beauty and they are mentioned several times in the Bible, like, like a lily among thorns is my darling among the maidens. That's beautiful words are from Song of Solomon. And you know, Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, he said, consider the, consider the lilies. They do not toil or spin about. Now, what Jesus was talking about there was that Jesus doesn't, uh, excuse me, the lilies don't think about anything when they grow. They just pop up out of the ground. They don't worry. Just like Jesus does not want us to worry because God will take care of us. Now there's a legend about the lilies that I find interesting. It's a story that's been passed down and it goes like this. When Jesus was suffering on the cross, he wept tears and they fell to the ground. And in that place where there were tears from Jesus, lilies grew. Now let's look at the plant. Easter lilies are white. That's a symbol of purity. Purity reminds us about Jesus, that he was God's son and he came to earth and he was without sin. He never did anything wrong. He came to live with us and to teach us how to live in love. What do you notice about the shape of the flower? It looks quite like a trumpet, don't you think? A trumpet proclaiming that Jesus is risen, alleluia. <laughs> Blowing the trumpet, telling everyone, Christ has risen, he's risen indeed, alleluia. Now, what I find really fascinating is the way that lilies actually grow. And this is a beautiful reminder of how Jesus rose again from the dead. I'll show you what I mean. So first of all, you know, lilies only bloom during Easter. I find that amazing. But it's something more than that. I'll show you what I mean. So when lilies grow, they come from a bulb. I don't know if you've ever seen a bulb before, but here you go. This is a bulb. When you compare it to the flower, it's rather ugly, isn't it? You know, this bulb is kind of like death. 
like Jesus' death on the cross. It was ugly. This ball, it's rather ugly. And, you know, what you do with this bulb is you plant it deep in the ground, in the dark earth, just like Jesus was taken down from the cross and he was placed in the dark tomb. Now the bulb stays in the dark ground for three years and then explodes out of the ground into this beautiful, glorious flower, just like Jesus was laid in the dark tomb. And after three days, he came out. He gloriously rose from the dead. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Christ is risen. Alleluia. And this flower is a beautiful reminder of that. It's quite amazing. And you know, there's a fragrance that comes from the lilies. It's beautiful and sweet. And it reminds me of the sweet and beautiful love and grace that God gives us all the time, no matter what. Well, I believe that solves the mystery of the Easter lily and why we use it to celebrate Easter. Now, in the weeks to come, when your sister has gotten on your last nerve and you're sad because you cannot have your friends over for a birthday party to celebrate your birthday, I want you to try to find the joy. I want you to think about ways, unexpected ways, that you might find joy in your life, even when things are not going as planned. You know, we're celebrating Easter. I was supposed to be in Florida with my family, but I'm finding joy celebrating with you here today. And also, what's interesting is that for the first time ever, my entire family from Virginia, Florida, Missouri, Illinois, the people I love most in the world for the first time ever are all going to celebrate Easter together. We're going to have a Zoom party. Oh my goodness, it would be fabulous. So, finding the joy in unexpected ways. Let us pray. Dear God, you sent us Jesus to remind us that he is greater than anything that can go wrong in our world. The simple fact that Jesus came back to life is proof that we can face anything that happens, and we can find joy when things don't go our way. We can be brave because Jesus is alive. We can be patient because Jesus is alive. We can have hope because Jesus is alive. And we can have joy because Jesus is alive. We pray to you, precious God, Jesus' name. Amen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Find Easter joy, my friends. Toodaloo. Cheerio. Till next time.